Oh, hello there. My name is Shinky. Welcome to Shinky JRPGs and welcome to my review of Eternal Sonata. Have you ever played a game where the moment you turn it on, you realize that the game was going to be an incredible experience unlike any other that you've ever experienced before? Eternal Sonata is a game that fits that vibe perfectly. Before we get into everything, let me know if there's any games that you've played that instantly gave you that same feeling. Anyways, Eternal Sonata was released on June 14th, 2007 on the Xbox 360 and September 18th, 2008 on the PlayStation 3. So what exactly makes this game so special? Well, that's what I'm here to talk about today. So pull up a chair, grab a drink, and get ready to hear what makes Eternal Sonata stand up above all other JRPGs. So the story of Eternal Sonata is something I've never really seen in any game before. The story is based off of a true event, albeit quite loosely, but it does take inspiration from a real person. This person is the classical composer Frédéric François Chopin, who passed away on October 17th, 1849. The whole game is Chopin's dream world as he lies on his deathbed. The actual story of that is pretty decent as well. The game starts with a girl that is jumping off a cliff into the ocean. No explanation is provided, she jumps off a cliff seemingly to her death. Then all of a sudden the game cuts to a nice field with the same girl, who we come to know is named Polka, going to the town of Ritardando to sell floral powder. However, due to the country of Forte increasing the taxes so substantially, no one is able to buy it and afford it, and would much rather use the cheaper option of mineral powder instead. One night, Polka meets Frederick, and Polka convinces him to come with her to Forte Castle to try and convince him to reduce the taxes on floral powder so people can afford it for their health, as mineral powder seems to have a detrimental effect. Along the way, several friends are made in typical RPG fashion, and on starts our story. I personally wish this could have become a series. The idea of having a game based on a real-life composer is wonderful. I'm sure this is by no means what was going through Chopin's mind as he was on his deathbed, but it's a great premise for an RPG. It's a shame that this game didn't end up being part of a series. Instead, it's the only game in this IP. It's really too bad that Namco passed up this chance. Eternal Sonata has to be one of the most unique RPGs gameplay-wise that I've ever seen. In Towns, it's very reminiscent of PS2 RPGs probably because this game did come out very early into the Xbox 360 lifespan. You have various NPCs that you can talk to, typical save points, and so on. No overworld like a lot of RPGs of its time, and the game is incredibly linear. Generally, once you go through an area, you can't return to previous areas. There is some backtracking, but it's very rare. The unique feature with NPCs in this game is you can actually play music with them. As you explore, you will find score pieces. You can then use these score pieces and play music with various NPCs. Get a good ranking and you will get an item or an accessory. This is generally how you get most accessories in the game. I kind of ignored a good amount of the scores and NPCs on my playthrough, and I noticed near the end of the game I really didn't have much of an option of accessories. So it's really something that you might want to keep an eye on. There are quite a few missables, but as long as you're one of those people that likes to check every area, you'll be fine. The game does have a decent amount of side quests as well, which can result in new costumes, new items, money, or even accessories. They are by no means necessary, but they do help quite a bit. The battle gameplay is where the real uniqueness of Eternal Sonata comes out. Eternal Sonata is a hybrid of an action RPG and a turn-based RPG, and the combat system evolves as you get further in the game. So the basics of combat is you have an attack combo, a guard button, a skill button, and an item button. Once your turn comes up, you can move as you see fit, and as you move, your action time gauge drops. You have until the action gauge drops to zero seconds to do any action you'd like, either attack, skill, or items. Guarding is done in a reactionary type method, where when your enemy attacks, you have a split second to press the guard button, and if you hit the guard button, you will reduce damage. Anyways, during battle, typically you use your action time to run up to your enemies, attack until almost out of time, and then press the skill button to finish your enemies off. The game starts very slow and bland and basic. However, as you progress with the plot, you start to unlock a higher party level, which has more combat features and more of a risk-reward system. For example, party level 1 has unlimited tactical time to decide what you're going to do on your turn, and the action gauge only drops when you're actually performing an action. 
party level two introduces echoes to power up your special attacks, but now your action gauge will continually drop once you start moving. It makes combat a bit more difficult, but also gives you more combat features or item slots, making the extra risk worth it. Luckily, the game gives you enough time to get used to the new combat features and restrictions before introducing you to the next level, so you don't feel rushed or feel like you're still getting used to the new system. The skill system is what I feel really sets Eternal Sonata apart from other RPGs. You have one skill button and two skill slots, one light skill and one dark skill. The way you pick and choose between skills is dependent on where you are standing. If you are standing in the light, you will use your light skill. If you are standing in a shadow, you will use your dark skill. There are equipment and usable items in the game that can force you to either be in the light or be in the dark regardless of where you are standing. These can be helpful. For example, if you are fighting a boss and want a character to be a dedicated healer, you might equip them with something that gives them the shining body status so they always have access to their healing ability. As your party level raises, you eventually get access to a second light and dark skill used by holding R2, allowing for more options. The PlayStation 3 port of this game added a bunch of features and rebalanced the game generally to make it harder. It adds a few new costumes, two dungeons, one mandatory and one optional, reduced the experience gained in battle, changed the levels which you learn certain abilities, and added new story cutscenes to make the story make some actual sense. Also, in battle, your starting position is randomized now, so battles don't feel as repetitive. There are also two new playable characters, Crescendo and Serenade. However, all they are are battle characters. If they don't show up in cutscenes or anything, it seemed a bit shallow, but it's nice to have more battle options. I personally really enjoyed using Serenade as a healer. So the first thing I realized when I started playing this game again is, wow. For a game initially released in 2007, this game looks beautiful. It definitely did not look like a game from 16 years ago. The game is so bright and colorful, the cell shaded graphics aged incredibly well. The only thing I complain about is a lot of the skills in battle look similar, just with a different color effect. It's not a deal breaker, but a little bit of originality would have been nice. I really enjoyed the character designs in this game. Characters like Fugue, Count Waltz, and Falsetto were just a few of my favorites. I wouldn't say any characters though were uninspired, they all look super good. Well done to the character designer for sure. So for a game that takes inspiration from a classical composer, it should not be a surprise that the sound of the game is extraordinary. First of all, before we get into the actual music of the game, the whole game's theme is music. Almost everything in the game is based around this musical theme. Every character, every dungeon, and every town has something to do with music in one way or another. Some examples of this are you have playable characters such as Allegretto, Beat, March, and Jazz. Then you have bosses like Tuba, Fugue, and Waltz, or towns like Retardando and Forte. And I really like how the theme of the game fits into everything. Even the title of the game is Eternal Sonata. It's really a quite genius way of naming everything. As for the music, it's only fitting for it to have a lot of piano compositions, considering the whole game is based on a dream by Chopin. It's not exclusively piano, but it is a common instrument in a lot of the music in the game. The game even has brief moments where they include actual Chopin compositions and explains the history of the composer. The game was composed by Matoy Sakurabit, and it honestly has to be some of his most relaxing work. It's just so gentle and so calm. It really conveyed the fact that the game in itself was taking place in a dream world before somebody's death. Anyways, this next part is not a complaint, but maybe a pet peeve? Do you remember how back in the PlayStation 2 and early PlayStation 3 era, how every anime and JRPG seemed to have the same voice actors? As somebody who absolutely adores the Tales series, I couldn't help but notice how so many voice actors seem to also play roles in that series. For example, you have Johnny Young Bosch, who played Guy in Tales of the Abyss, and Emil in Tales of Symphonia Dawn of the New World. He also plays Fugue in Eternal Sonata. Or then again, you also have Sam Regal, who played Flynn in Tales of Asperia, and Jude in Tales of Zillia. He also plays Allegretto in Eternal Sonata. Now, it doesn't ruin the experience, but it definitely does take you out of the whole experience a little when you recognize the voice actors from a different piece of media, especially when those voices are very easily recognizable from one of your favorite series of all time. The voice acting is good, be it in English 
or Japanese, but it just kind of gripes me, so to speak. Eternal Sonata is not a very long game, but there is a reason for that. A standard playthrough without touching any of the bonus content will probably run you about 30 to 40 hours, depending on how much grinding you need to do. The 360 original is a little bit shorter than that, only because it doesn't have all the dungeons on the PlayStation 3 port, all the story scenes on the PlayStation 3 port, and the experience is higher, making it so that you don't have to grind as much. However, while Eternal Sonata is a bit on the short side for a JRPG, this is because the game is designed for multiple playthroughs, as you cannot unlock all your content on your first playthrough. You'll have to load your save file and play the game again on Encore mode. Encore mode is sort of a hard mode where enemies are stronger and you can unlock more content such as the second optional dungeon and extra costumes. In the end, if you really want to see all the content, you're probably looking at about 65 to 70 hours. I personally did not do Encore mode, but I'm not complaining honestly. 40 hours is a respectable length for an RPG. I'd even go ahead and say it's my ideal length for a JRPG. So Eternal Sonata. It's hard to say that this game is anything less than amazing. It has that very classic JRPG feel while still looking absolutely gorgeous. The game can be quite difficult at times and sometimes absolutely unfair, but not enough to ruin the experience at all. Would I suggest this game to you? Well, if you don't mind RPG cliches rapidly thrown at you, you enjoy classical music, and a story that is absolutely depressing, this would 100% be down your aisle for sure. Have you played Eternal Sonata before? Let me know what you think about it in the comments below. I'd love to have discussions going on about this beautiful game. As always, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. That's the meat and potatoes, folks. Thanks for tuning in and have a wonderful day.